A few weeks ago, Nintendo opened something they've never done before. A fan poll where you can vote for characters that you would like to see in Super Smash Bros.'s upcoming DLC. Back in my day, if your character didn't make it, you were stuck to a five-year death sentence, praying hopelessly that maybe you'd get your character back in the next installment. But DLC is a game changer. Every one of your wildest Smash dreams can come true once again with enough votes and support. People always ask me what my votes were, so here's my top 10 Smash Bros. DLC character picks. My only rule? No returning characters. We've already gotten the announced returns of Mewtwo and Lucas, but I want to see some new faces. So let's go. Number 10. Professor Layton. As many of you know, I love myself some Nintendo Logic games. And while I was leaning more toward Phoenix Wright for this pick, I decided to hold off because he's already appeared in his own little fighting game adventure. But Professor Layton, on the other hand, he's ripe for the picking. And I know what you're thinking, but Jay Wits, Professor Layton solves puzzles. How can he solve the puzzle of don't get punched in the face? But it turns out Layton isn't ever afraid to get in on the action, whether it's putting himself in the face of danger or even drawing a sword for a duel. I think there's a huge opportunity to have a sword swinging Layton in Smash Bros. Uh oh, I think I just gave them a reason to not take this vote seriously. Number 9. Inkling. There were a lot of Nintendo games on display at last year's E3, but the one that took me by most surprise was Splatoon. Even though I was on an early build of the game, it already felt like a fresh take on the competitive shooter genre, and I can't wait for the game to come out later next month. Nintendo does a lot of things well, but one thing they don't do that often is test the waters with new first-party IP. But when they do introduce the world to a new concept and character, what better way to cement it in the Nintendo family than by including characters alongside Nintendo veterans in Smash Bros. Between ink guns, close-range paintbrushes and rollers, or the ability to transform between human and squid, the Splatoon Inklings seem like they have plenty of potential to make a splash in Smash. Number 8. Halucha. Okay, let me elaborate a little. See, people really want another Pokémon in Smash, even AFTER the Mewtwo DLC. Some want a third-generation Pokémon to line up with Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. The most popular pick right now being Sceptile, because the newest Smash Bros. game currently has a fire and water third stage, but nothing in the grass department. Things are also getting a little crazy because of the upcoming Pokémon Tournament game. If you didn't get the Pokémon you wanted in Pokémon Fighter A, why not just wish for them in Pokémon Fighter B? But in Smash Bros. for 3DS, I got a little glimpse of a Pokémon I didn't even know I wanted in Smash. In Magikant, you can get the help of the Flying Man by reaching him first, bringing him in to fight for you, and generally wreck the playing field. Can you imagine if they took this concept and revamped it with more moves and a fresh coat of paint? I'll admit it, I'm biased. I love Halucha. He's so hot right now. His trading card is really great in competitive play, and I want more. To be fair, this is a pick that I'd be happy to see in either Smash or Pokémon, but with the 3DS already half of the way there, I'm sure they could make a hilarious and epic Luchamon join the fray. Number 7. Isaac. The Golden Sun series has seen a fun little trilogy across Nintendo's portable systems, giving us the mostly silent protagonist of Isaac. I know we saw Isaac as an assist trophy in Brawl, but he's so much more than that force push thing that you get here. He's the Golden Sun equivalent of an Earthbender, a Venus Adept, using a variety of landscape and plant-like magic to defeat his foes. There's lots of potential for unique attacks here to be explored outside of the traditional RPG attacks, like fire and electricity. I'll also take one new Golden Sun game on the 3DS, thanks Camelot, that would be great. Oh well, in the meantime, I guess we can wait for Isaac in Super Smash Flash. I should make a video about that sometime. Number 6. Ridley. I've already covered Ridley pretty much completely in my What's Up with Ridley video, but overall I think it's definitely possible to make a functional Ridley fighter in Smash. I know Sakurai wants to keep Ridley as a giant boss, but with a couple of fan-made Project M mods I've seen, it's definitely possible to make a compromise between fighter size and Ridley characteristics. We need more villains, we need more heavyweights, and we definitely need more Metroid. Number 5. Banjo and Kazooie. There are few games that took up more of my time on the Nintendo 64 than the Banjo Kazooie titles, all about exploring, collecting, and fighting using a variety of skills from the tag team Bear Bird combo. There's already been a ton of fan support for the team. 
Hat in Time concept artist Luigi Lucarelli drew up sketches for an entire moveset Banjo and Kazooie might have, while YouTuber Artsy Omni has made an entire mock-up for what Banjo might look like in an official Smash Bros. reveal trailer. There's just one problem. Banjo and Kazooie are owned entirely by Rare, who is now owned by Microsoft. On top of this, it seems like Smash Bros. 4 has its own multi-animal combo character in the form of Duck Hunt. Some feel like this character would be too close in execution to what Banjo and Kazooie might look like in Smash, especially with a bird on the top. All things said though, Xbox head Phil Spencer has even stated his support for bringing Banjo and Kazooie on board to Smash Bros, so who knows? It could happen. Number 4 Waluigi I love everything about Waluigi. I love his awkward figure, his ridiculous voice, his ability to waterbend, his crotch chop celebrations. Waluigi has been shafted by Nintendo for 15 years, stuck to the Mario side titles and the lowly role of assist trophy in both Brawl and Wii U. Meanwhile, I've seen characters like Space Waifu over here go from floating NPC to full-time Mario and Smash Bros. character. What's up with that? You're telling me that she's cute and he isn't? I don't think you're playing the right Waluigi games. The biggest complaint I hear for Waluigi is that they wouldn't know what moves to give him. Hey, do you remember the game where Luigi farts horizontally? Sometimes you just gotta be creative. Waluigi does plenty of weird stuff that could easily become a Smash moveset. As Bruno Mars once said, don't believe me? Just why? Number 3 King K. Rool Like I mentioned with Ridley, we need more heavy characters and villains in Smash. And look at this guy, he's heavy and a villain. King K. Rool is one of the most recurring Nintendo villains of all time, Showing up as the main bad guy in the Donkey Kong Country trilogy, the Game Boy Kong Land games, DK64, King of Swing, Jungle Climber, and he's even been used as a crossover character with Mario before, as an addition to the baseball crew in Super Mario Sluggers on the Wii. Lots of people have the misconception that Rare owns King K. Rule because he wasn't used as a villain in the retro Donkey Kong Returns games, but this simply isn't true. Nintendo owns all the Donkey Kong Country characters. And it's widely speculated that the retro-produced Donkey Kong Country Returns games decided to use the new villains to distance themselves from the classics. But sometimes, you just can't beat the classics. If we can't get K. Rool in a new Donkey Kong game, then we definitely need to get the man some Smash action. Number 2 A Castlevania Belmont the Castlevania series has seen a wide variety of releases over the last 30 years, but the main series has gotten a ton of love on Nintendo's platforms, arguably more than many of the main series Smash Bros. fighters. And while Castlevania has been moving more in the God of War action direction with Lords of Shadow, even that game got a 3DS version, so there's still a lot of Nintendo history here. There are many Castlevania protagonists, but most of them are either a Belmont or a relative of a Belmont. The Belmont's whip is such an awesome and iconic weapon could be so much better than this. Plus, Castlevania has always been about discovering new interchangeable secondary weapons. There are B-moves waiting to happen. I know that Castlevania is owned by Konami and not Nintendo, but this hasn't stopped other Konami characters from showing up to fight before, and this guy was in way less Nintendo games. I don't care which Belmont you put in there, as long as they whip it. Whip it good. Number one. You know how Smash Bros has used two characters fighting at the same time before? Well, here's something even better. Three. A three-headed character. One-third Goku, one-third Shrek, and one-third Reckless Wiimote guy. Nah, it's actually Shovel Knight. I know, I know. Seriously, Shovel Knight? So yeah, I can think of a lot of reasons why Shovel Knight should not be in Smash Bros. He's brand new and doesn't have Nintendo history like other competitors. He's a smaller indie title funded on Kickstarter with less recognition. He isn't even a Nintendo exclusive with the game just coming to PlayStation systems. Who's that guy? That's not a Nintendo. And hey, look what just got announced. That's not a Nintendo. And the killing blow, the game isn't even available in Japan yet. The team is working on it, but it's a long process. So why on earth Shovel Knight? It's my dream pick. Just going straight on my gut instinct, the second Nintendo dropped that poll, all I could think of was putting Shovel Knight in for a vote. It was my favorite game of last year, feeling like a perfect blend of everything that made the NES good, combined with some smart modern game design. Shovel Knight was full of fast-paced action and outsmarting your opponents, and in many ways it felt like that same combat thrill you get in Smash Bros. itself. 
Shovel Knight has a nice variety of attacks that can be used both for range and melee combat. He's got plenty of different armor suits, which could be perfect picks for alternate costumes. RC Omni did another Smashified art for Shovel Knight, and just look at it. It looks good, man. Do I honestly think Shovel Knight will become a Smash Bros. DLC character? Nah, it's very unlikely in my opinion. But if you give me a poll that says pick any character, I'll go for the dream. Those are my 10 picks anyways. Feel free to let me know which Smash Bros. fighters you'd like to see in the comments. There's a ton of possibilities out there. If you want to check out some other Smash Bros. Top 10s that we've done, you can check them out right here. And if you liked this video, consider leaving a thumbs up or clicking the subscribe button to follow with future content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time with more Nintendo videos.